So what we have here is we have the cross section of kind of an oddly shaped beam, but what we're going to do is we're gonna find the centroid of this, this cross section. And the odd shape of it kind of gives us a little bit of a variety in, um, in this example from. So that's what we're going over in this video. If you want a video explaining more in depth the steps and the equations, you can click on this video link to go to that video. And I've also got the steps written out down in the description for all this. So if you find this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe. So the first thing we want to do is we want to establish our coordinate system for this shape. And our centroid is going to be based on that coordinate system, or in other words, our coordinates of our centroid is gonna be based off that coordinate system. So if you need to find the centroid with respect to a certain part of the, of the shape, like say down from the bottom or from the top, measured from one of those sides, it might be best to establish your coordinate system um, with one of the axes being touching and being along one of those lines. But in this case, we're not looking for it in any particular spot. So my next recommendation would be to establish your coordinate system where the origin is at the centroid of one of your composite parts of your shape. And now just eyeballing it, we have a circle here. So I'm just going to establish our coordinate system with the origin at the center of that circle. So this will be our X axis along here. And this will be our Y axis going straight up the center of this. Now what that does for us is it puts a lot of the, the coordinates of the component parts in places that are going to be zero. So all of the, because this object is symmetrical about what we've now created as the Y axis, um, all the coordinates for that, for the X coordinates for the centroids of each composite part are going to be zero. So um, that'll help us out there. Now the next step that we need to do is we need to break this object up into its composite parts. And now we've kind of already done that a little bit, but we can see here that this part is going to be our circle. And this part is going to be a rectangle and another rectangle. And we're gonna label these. We're gonna label this circle being A and this middle rectangle being B and the top rectangle to be C. And now what we want to do is we want to label them. So we're gonna say, we're gonna have A, B, and C. And now we want to find the centroid of each of those composite parts based on this coordinate system. And the centroid of each of those composite parts is X tilde and Y tilde. And then X bar and Y bar is the X and Y coordinates of the entire object. And X tilde and Y tilde are of each individual component. So the centroid of A, we set up our coordinate system. So the centroid of A is going to be just at the origin, so at zero, zero. So its coordinates for the centroid is gonna be zero, zero. Then for B, it's going to be right in the middle. So that lies on our Y axis. That means the X coordinate is going to be zero. And then the Y coordinate is going to be halfway up. So that'll be 75 millimeters up and then plus our 50 millimeters for the radius of our circle. 75 plus 50 is 125. And then for C, once again, the, this part is symmetrical about the Y axis that we've set up. And so it's X coordinate of the centroid is going to be zero. And then it's um, Y coordinate is going to be right in the middle of this object. So seven and a half millimeters up from um, this side of it, plus the 150 for this distance and then the 50 for this distance. So that all adds up to 200 
and 7.5 millimeters away from our origin. Now that we found the centroids of all of them, we need to find the area of each of those composite parts. And so for A, pi r squared, pi times by 50, mil, 50 squared is 7,854 millimeters squared. And then B is the width times the height. So 15 times by 150, that comes out to be 2,250 millimeters squared. And you'll notice that the rectangle B and rectangle C are the same size. So C is also gonna have an area of 2,000 250 square millimeters. So now that we've found those and kind of written it out, this is how I like to do it is write it all out and tabulate it. And that kind of makes it easier for our next step, which is to plug these into these equations. Now we kind of already identified before, but X bar is going to have the coordinate of zero. And the reason why that comes out to be is because the X tilde of all these centroids, so the X coordinate of the center of mass of all these is zero. That means that this top part is going to be zero and that makes x bar zero. But y bar on the other hand is not going to be zero because not all of the y tildes are zero, only a. So to find y bar, we're going to set this up. y bar equals all the centroid, all the y coordinates of the centroids multiplied by their respective areas. The first one is going to be zero times by 7,854. I'm not gonna write that because that would just be zero. For B, it's going to be 125 multiplied by the areas to um, 2,250. So 125 times by 2,250 plus the Y coordinate of C, that's 207.5 multiplied by its area, which is once again, 2250. And then all of that divided by all the areas added up. So 78.54 plus 2250 plus 2250 again. So I'm just gonna multiply that by two. And then plugging that into your calculator, you end up getting that Y bar is 60.56 millimeters away from the center of this circle, because that's how we set up our coordinate system. So 60.56 millimeters up above the center of that circle, so somewhere around in this, right in this area. And then, um, then we got it, that's it. But it's say if we were to have a hole in this object somewhere, remember that we would still need to find the centroid and the area of that hole, but that area would be counted as negative. So in this part, it would be subtracting. So just a little side note in, in for different situations. So there's a pretty simple example problem of finding the centroid of an object. And this was pretty simple because we only need to find y bar in this case because the object was symmetrical about um, an axis and we place that um, our y axis on that axis of symmetry making it a little bit easier so i hope you found this helpful if you did hit that like button if you have any questions or suggestions leave them down in the comments below and i will reply to them i've got my website up and going gostudentengineering.com you should go check it out it's got all these videos that I have on my channel, plus a little bit more written out description to help you along with this and a few more extra things. So checking that out helps me out a lot. So if you're new to this channel, my name is Preston Palmer of Student Engineering, and my goal is to help other engineering students like me better understand engineering. So if you found this video helpful, hit that like button and please subscribe.